This is like yesterday it's, and it's, today. But there's some stuff that's us, like this. Jack had this, so I just put it here rather than putting it away. Exactly. So yeah. if we were to consciously break the habit of not making this counter a dumping ground day after day after day, how, how would what would it, what yeah. would it, what would it look like instead? What would what it look like if it were easy to keep this counter clear of clutter? What would it, what would it look like? It would look clear. Well, yeah, I get that. <laughs> this clutter begets clutter. I find that when I when that kitchen counter is like that, the rest of the kitchen gets like that. Or if the table gets cluttered, then the schoolroom gets cluttered, the playroom gets cluttered, the dining room. Gets, it it like it's like clutter is contagious or something. Hi, I'm Erica. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I share my journey of minimalism, decluttering, simple living, slow living here on this channel. We all have things that we just don't want to do. Either it feels overwhelming, it's annoying, it's just something we don't feel like doing. Um, yeah, we don't feel like tackling a pile of dirty dishes, a pile of laundry, a decluttering project. We know we need to do it, but we don't want to do it. It's, it's causing anxiety, it's just too much, or it's just something we're not in the mood to do. The question I ask myself when I am faced with that feeling or that task that I just don't want to do is what would make this simple next time? What could I change so that when this happens next time, it doesn't feel this way? So, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of it comes down to the habit of not mm -hmm. putting it here. We, yeah, we just gotta, we gotta try and fix our habits. You know, I should have taken this when Jack wasn't gonna open them up. I should have taken this and I should have put it in the pantry instead of putting it here. Uh, just stuff like that. The, what would make it easier or simpler? Your, what your answer is is to not do it, right? Yeah. Don't put things on the counter. Mm -hmm. Put them in their home where they belong. And yeah. If it doesn't have a home, find its home. Yeah. Create its home. Um, and putting things back. So I think if it were to look easier, we would have to say you're not allowed to put stuff on the counter. Yeah. Or. What if you had a small area of the counter where you are allowed to put something? We did something? that. We yeah. had the wooden tray and it yeah. just, all it did was collect coins and barrettes. And what if we just said, let's try for a week of like, you're not allowed to put anything on this counter. You're not allowed, to, I'm not allowed. I am, I'm a big okay. culprit, obviously. Yeah. We just need to be focusing on the habit of putting stuff away initially more. So we're talking about tackling those everyday things in a more simplified way. Um, you know, for me, the kitchen counter gets cluttered every single day. This is still something that we <laughs> do to ourselves. And, you know, I have a pile of laundry in the laundry room right now. I have a dirty kitchen that needs attention. We've got messes that cause me anxiety. Um, and, you know, that speaks to processes in house and habits, but thinking about small things that I can change is a way that I apply minimalism and practice simple living every single day. When I think about like dirty dishes, maybe the, you know, I think about how can I make this more simple tomorrow with tomorrow's dirty dishes? Is it less dishes because they just sit and accumulate because we have other dishes we can use? Or is it that I need to empty the dishwasher first thing in the morning to have a place for those dirty dishes to go all day long. So is it a habit that needs to develop? Is it living with less things? Is it changing the way we think about something? Um, you know, we, we made a tweak to coffee <laughs> about a year ago. We were using K-cups all the time. It felt wasteful. It was wasteful. Um, it was a decision that we, we just, I mean, we had a stock of K-cups and we were going through them and I knew I wanted to make a change. I wanted something a little more simple. And the change was the coffee maker. To have reusable K-cup um, mesh things or to use a coffee maker that has a reusable filter, um, which we had as well. So we changed out our coffee maker. We brought out the old one and now we just make a pot, pot of coffee. And now we put the coffee grounds to use in our compost pile. So by making these little tweaks over time, things get easier and simple. They feel like better decisions. And we start thinking about things differently, like getting dressed. 
my closet right now is feels curated for me. I enjoy all the things I have in there. And now when I shop, I'm shopping more intentionally. I'm shopping for things that are sustainably made with sustainable fabrics that are made ethically, that are companies that I want to support. Am I spending more per item? Yes, but that item is gonna last longer and it's a better decision for our planet. By decluttering my closet over the last year and a half and really curating by season of what I want and honing in on a color pal palette and fabrics that I love wearing, by doing that, I simplified getting dressed. It's very easy to get dressed now. <laughs> very easy to make a decision and put something together. Today I'm wearing, <laughs> well today was very easy because I'm freezing. I don't know if that's a 40s thing. I'm getting ready to turn 45 and I am cold all the time. I have been this way for the last few years where I just can't get warm. So I'm wearing my long johns today and under my jeans. <laughs> which is cold. Asking myself that question, what will make this simpler next time? Or what change could I have already made that would simplify this right now? Cleaning the kitchen counter, for instance. There are six things that I've done over the last year and a half that I'll share with you that have come from asking myself that question. How can I make this simpler? Um, the first thing is that we've reduced the number of things we own. We still own more than what I would quantify as a minimalist, but we are minimalish and we have absolutely far less things than we did. By the thousands, we have gotten rid of items over the last year and a half. So reducing the amount of things in our lives definitely simplified our house. Decluttering our house simplified our house. We didn't replace it with more things. We change the way we think about products, like coffee, for instance. I change the way I think about laundry detergent and the plastic bottles that we get. Now I get a 100% recyclable package full of zero waste laundry detergent pods. That to me was a great decision and a change for our family and it simplified our laundry process. We've changed a lot of our spending habits. We have changed the way we think about a day, how we exchange our time, what, what, what are the things that are most important to us, and that is what we want to spend our time on. And those are habits that we've changed to make sure we're spending our time on the things that we want to spend our time on. Recognize and set boundaries. Personal boundaries, time boundaries, space boundaries, putting limitations on things. So, you know, and being really particular about what gets invited into our home when it comes to stuff. So by establishing boundaries for myself to know, I know I cannot handle that many things today. I don't want to handle that many things today. It's not that I can't, it's that I don't want to anymore. So by setting those boundaries, I can now feel less stressed and life is more simple. And in doing that, I also learned the power of saying no. Saying no is extremely powerful. Once you get the habit of saying no and the practice of saying no down and mastered, saying no is very powerful. And each time I say no, I have to stop and think and say, what am I actually saying yes to? Because by saying no, I'm saying yes to something else. And what is that yes? Is that the yes I want? then saying no is the right decision. The last thing I would say is when I'm trying to figure out how to make something in an everyday life more simple is to just single task it. This is a new thing I've been doing in the last couple of months and I love this. It's, it's part of slow living, I would think, um, but just to single task something. So when I'm making coffee, I'm making coffee. I am not... <laughs> cleaning up. I am not feeding the dog. I am not straightening up the couch. I'm not finding a book. I am making coffee. When I'm getting dressed, I am getting dressed. I am not also starting a load of laundry and trying to brush my teeth and do my makeup. I'm doing one thing at a time. And by doing that, my personal boundaries are set. My time boundaries are set. I am exchanging the time that I am spending for something that I really want to focus on and I really want to do. And it's keeping life simple. It's keeping the minutes simple because I'm doing the things that I need to do and the things that I want to do one at a time. And from a type A multitasker, 
person, that was an adjustment and it is still a choice. It's an adjustment I still have to decide to do. I still have to decide to single task. It's not an inherent natural thing for me. I want to be more productive all the time. I, it's just what I've always done. And so changing that and recognizing that I don't need to be a thousand percent productive every minute of every day. Uh, and that goes back to those boundaries of those recognizing that I, I don't want to be productive when I'm making coffee. That's not, I don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> what do you do throughout the day? Do you have a way that you find little pockets of simplicity and, and how do you question how to make something simpler? Uh, simply just asking myself, what would make this simpler? Is a way for me to stop, think about what needs to change so that when I make that change, it is a bit easier the next go round. It doesn't feel so difficult to get up and do all the things that need doing. <laughs> watching i'd love if you subscribe to this channel and join our family here online where we support each other with kindness in the comments